Just like the fighters, the referees must be at the highest level of focus during fight night. Their interventions and decisions are crucial for the health of the two in the cage, and their work should be taken as seriously as possible. However, some make unimaginable mistakes and thus put fighters and their careers in danger. Today, we're covering some of the biggest refereeing mistakes. So, subscribe to our channel, get comfortable, and let's get into it. With the first fight on the list, we go to the old days of the Wicked Pride, where the sports veteran Don Fry faced the much younger James Thompson. The confrontation before the match promised a hell of a fight, and already in the first seconds, Fry sends Thompson to the floor. Unfortunately, that's the only highlight for Don in this fight, who played the role of a practice dummy for the rest of the bout, spending most of his time under Thompson's pressure. Fry managed to survive and get up, but this forced him into a corner that exposed him to brutal attacks from the Colossus, with Fry failing to answer. All Don had to do was fall and end the match, but everyone knew his stubbornness wouldn't allow him to do that. Instead, he took an entire arsenal of various shots from Thompson, and the referee Yuji Shimada watched from a safe place as the Predator took about 60 punches to the head before he remembered that he was there in the role of referee. The damage Fry received in this match at 40 is by no means healthy, but credit for his warrior's heart must be given. The interesting about this fight is that it was Don Fry who inspired Thompson to start training in MMA, and the referee on the other hand was probably inspired by Mario Yamasaki to pursue poor referee work. Of course, it was Don Fry's job to stay in the fight as long as he could stand, but the referee should have been the one to stop the unnecessary punishment. Charles Oliveira and Nick Lentz kept each other company three times in the octagon, submission and knockout. But the first match he won is more than questionable. In 2011, the first bout took place, and at the very start, Charles showed his attractive BJJ skills from the back. Submission attempts were present on both sides. The display of striking was at a satisfactory level for everyone watching, and even the grapplers' exchanges were slick. However, problems arose in the second round when Charles managed to escape from a thick guillotine and hit Lentz with an illegal knee while standing up. The crowd immediately erupted with whistles and boos, but referee Chip Snyder was the only man in the arena who didn't understand what was happening. This shot allowed for another knee and taking the opponent's back, and we all know what happens when Charles climbs the back. Nick Lentz was finished with a rear naked choke and a gruesome injury that left him with an open wound on his eye. Regardless of the audience's roars, Charles celebrated his controversial victory with a dance. <laughs> not knowing that it would be overturned in a no contest. Mario Yamasaki's work as a referee is a must for videos like this, and the unfortunate fighters he refereed in 2012 were Glover Teixeira and Fabio Maldonado. Glover pressured Fabio early in the match and had no intention of letting him go, beating him from full mount for almost the entire first round letting the blood flow early. The one-sided beating continued in the second round with the same scene as in the last one, with the sounds of heavy blows being ridiculously loud. At one point in the fight, they let the doctor take a look at Maldonado, who said he was fine and allowed him to continue the match. However, in the transition to the third round, the doctor had to intervene and stop the match due to Fabio's ruined face. Got a little tired there from punching on him. Oh, oh big elbow. Oh. He had all the luck in the world to have up-to-date doctors present, as Yamasaki wasn't going to do anything about Glover's dominating beating of his compatriot. However, Fabio had the opportunity to show the heart of a lion and incredible durability, but also had a chance to leave his wife in the cage thanks to Mario if he dies he dies Yamasaki. The following situation happened in the recent past on December 2nd, when Bobby King Green met Jalen Turner in a lightweight bout. Although we're used to Bobby being the king of short notice, Turner took over the recipe and swooped in as a late replacement. The Tarantula had a quality winning streak that was ruined by two straight losses, and he needed this win more than anything, but it came at the cost of Green's brain cells. Jalen was more successful with his shots against the always quick Bobby. 
and it took him a little over 2 minutes to find him and rock him with a right, sending him to the floor to end the match. Referee Kerry Howley made sure that it wasn't over until it was over, and calmly saw off Jalen's brutal ground and pound on Bobby, who was lying on his stomach and unconscious. He incurred the wrath of the MMA community, whose members immediately took to Twitter. Brian Keller gave the shortest and best description of the situation in the outbreak of comments. Dana White also commented on the situation at the post-fight press conference and expressed his displeasure. You mentioned the Bobby Green knockout. Great by Jaden Turner, but referee, not so great. Yeah, one of the worst I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean, he's been around for a while. He's a mm -hmm. fairly solid ref. What do you think that can be a privacy to? So the difference is, you know, we've had some refs say some dumb shit in the past. Like, oh, I, I, I allowed her to be a warrior tonight and goofy shit like that. He knows that he made a mistake tonight and he's, he does not feel good about it. So, yeah. It's not just about the UFC referees because Bellator also had unpleasant moments. And to make matters worse, the referee had a mistake in the featherweight title fight. Pat Curran and Joe Warren clashed in Bellator's round cage in 2012. They took the exciting fight to three rounds with the admixtures of excellent striking and wrestling. Curran repeatedly hurt Warren with big knees to the face while Joe tried to take down his opponent. Finally, one knee landed brutally and Warren was doing his best to try and stay on his feet. But the ensuing barrage of strikes should have ended the match a long time ago, but not if referee Jeff Mallett was in charge. Warren received about 20 unanswered blows, not to mention the knees, and Jeff allowed Curran to take the life of his opponent in addition to the title. Ryan Tobin, Warren's manager, stated that the former Bellator champion sustained a concussion and will not compete in the 145-pound division. He also confirmed that Warren threw up backstage due to the impacts and fatigue. Len Clavisto showed us at AX Combat that judges do not spare fights of either gender with bad decisions. In one of the many defeats of her relatively poor MMA career, Kim Couture squared off against Sheila Bird who was only in her second pro appearance. The fight, which lasted for one round, was spent in women's hugs more than punches. And after the first minute, the girls found themselves on the ground. Sheila Bird proved to be more creative from a dominant position which is understandable considering she comes from a BJJ background, and therefore, she caught Kim in the not-so-often-seen leg scissor choke. Couture was left unconscious due to suffocation, and obviously, referee Len was in the same state. It took him as much as 10 seconds to repeatedly check the numbness in the hands of the unconscious American female fighter. Coivisto probably waited until the head was completely separated from the body before stopping the fight. In the rest of her career, Kim lost three more fights before retiring, but now she can boast that she was seconds from death in an MMA fight. Another mistake happened in 2023 at the Fury event, where Frank Colazzo was in charge of refereeing. Two Mexicanos, Edgar Chirez and Gianni Vasquez, squared off in a flyweight bout, leading the match to the fourth round. Vasquez was in a dominant position, but Chirez was quick with his feet and pinned his opponent in a deep triangle. His grip on his legs and arms was enough to put his compatriot to sleep, and he winces and stopped the fight. Vasquez, who suffered tears in his elbow and shoulder and repeatedly ran out of oxygen, spoke about the judge's decision. So it's crazy. Tap. Oh my gosh, what is happening? There's the lightweight bout between Francisco Trinaldo and Jai Herbert in Abu Dhabi 2020 could have ended fain. But in the end, it was Dan Hardy who paid the price. The three-round match went in favor of Francisco, who was better in the striking and had two out of three successful takedowns, one knockdown, two submission attempts, and three minutes of control. On the other hand, Herbert also had one knockdown and the same amount of control time, but his opponent was a shade better, as he showed in the last round. A minute and a half into the third round and he threw his opponent flat to the ground with a superb left overhand. Trinaldo was in a dilemma about whether to beat him further, and Herb Dean's silence was a sign of approval. The, the only sad thing is that his heroic intervention was rewarded with a dismissal from the UFC. Hey, we hope you enjoyed watching the video just as a necessary punishment. Video. Peace.